Welcome, welcome, welcome to Crashes and Taxes. I am your host for this podcast, Rebecca Walser. So excited you guys joined us on this podcast today. It's going to be a great one because I, I want to talk to you about one of my famous, um, really kind of sayings, which is it's all about the hedge. In other words, uh, it's not about avoiding risk. It's about you know, minimizing the risk that you take. It's about hedging the risk that you're taking. And so how do we hedge risk, especially today when the market is going up, going down, all because of the news headlines that we talked about even just last week? Um, and you got to have a plan. So number one, you have to have a plan. But number two, you have to understand the difference really between what I would say is... Um, just standard asset and class management and really tactical management. And that's really where there's just become a really big divergence in between what money managers provide. And it's going to become very, very, very clearly obvious who's just a traditional, maybe what I'd call an institutional manager and who really is on the cutting edge of, of really tactical um, tactical. Um, ma money management. So what am I talking about? So you go into any big box shop, you know, the Morgans, the Merrills, the Raymond James, Edward Jones, um, you know, any of these big box shops, and you're going to get really what I'd call just traditional institutional management, not tactical management. So it's more of a passive management style. So let me explain to you what I mean. So I'm John Smith, let's say, and I walk into a big um, shop um, because I'm going, I'm my bank with Bank of America and uh, they are, you know, basically own Merrill Lynch and they say, oh, you know, John Smith, you have a lot of money here. You really should talk to one of our, you know, investment bankers. We're going to get you over to our people with, um, and, and with Merrill Lynch. And so you make an appointment, you go see the guy, Mr. I don't know, whoever, Mr. Money. And Mr. Money is telling you, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you've got all this money. It's just sitting in a money market over there at the Bank of America. It doesn't really, don't want to lock it up in a CD. It's a great time to invest. You know, market's been down. You could probably buy in at a discount and, you know, and, you know, you have whatever, whatever. He just starts talking to you, you know. And so John Smith's sitting there listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up a account and you know, the, the Mr. Money says to John Smith, yeah, you're going to take um, this in profile. So we'll kind of know what kind of risk tolerance you have. And then we'll be able to manage your money according to what your preferences are. And so John Smith takes um, a little bit of a profile, gets kind of a number of what his risk preferences are. And then basically, Mr. Money goes to what Merrill Lynch has set up as what is going to be a portfolio that fits Mr. John Smith's risk number that he just has gotten. And that's what they're going to put him in. They're going to put his money into this model portfolio, model portfolio, model portfolio, model portfolio. I'm saying that because this is what's happening that you don't understand. They're putting you into something they already have set up for somebody like you, that, that you fall into that criteria. They put you into their model portfolio. And then because of whatever's happening, they rebalance their model portfolio on a quarterly basis. Now, people say that all the time. They have no idea what that means. What does it mean to rebalance a portfolio? Let's say that we have this portfolio and it's 10% cash. It's 40% uh, bonds and government bonds, not even commercial grade bonds, but just government bonds, investment grade bonds. And, um, and then the rest of it is equities, which that give us a 50% equity position. And let's just say that it's 50% uh, equities and utilities and consumer staples. I've just described a very, very, very conservative portfolio because it's less than, um, it's half or less in equities and the equities that it's invested in are what we'd call, you know, sort of um, consumer durables or consumer staples or something that's, you know, very necessary no matter what happens. You have to have utilities through every market cycle. So it's not a very um, aggressive investment position from an equity position. And then we're in 40% government bonds and 10% cash. So this is a very, very conservative portfolio. But let's just say that um, something happens with the price of oil and utility stocks are just going through the roof. 
And so they are literally just going through the roof. And so what happens is at the end of the quarter, we started the quarter off with 50% of the value of our portfolio being in utilities. Well, now as, as part of, you know, our stock mix, now utilities have been, you know, greatly increased in value because of the demand to go into utility stocks through whatever happened with oil. And so utilities is just now shot up, you know, with a 10%, 15% rise in price. So now the value of our portfolio is more heavily weighted in utilities because the value of utilities has gone up so much. So when we get to our end of our quarter and we get to be rebalanced, Merrill Lynch of that portfolio is going to sell some of the utility stocks so that the value of the overall utilities now is back down to the target of 50%. So in other words, we were overweighted in utilities simply because utilities went up so much and we were underweighted in what our other holdings were. But because we determined that this model portfolio should be only 50% utilities and consumer durables I actually also used as the example, then we would sell and we would basically rebalance to our model portfolio. So a lot of times people think that their money manager is individually going in and really selling their positions and rebuying some stuff and reselling, but that's not what's happening. What's actually happening is the money manager actually is going in at the institutional level and rebalancing that model portfolio and every client who's invested in that model portfolio is going to see rebalancing in their individual account because the model portfolio was rebalanced and that's what you're invested in is that model portfolio. So when you talk about institutional management, it's really things that are decided and that's exactly why it's called institutional at the institutional level and you as a retail investor or retail client basically are coming in and just being put into their model portfolio and that's what you're being put into so i'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all don't mishear me what i'm saying is that's how you're being managed it's a very passive management style because it says this is what somebody in this particular risk category will like and will need. And so this is the model portfolio for that type of client. Let's put it together. We'll rebalance it. And that's how those client will be invested. That's the way it works. Very, very, very passive. Notice that I didn't say that anything was changed on the model portfolio while oil prices were going up, while there might have been some opportunities to capture, while we didn't go in and reallocate more money to our um, utilities because of oil. We just basically rebalanced it and we rebalanced it down. So we sold, you know, at some, but what if it wasn't the top end? What if we could have held on longer? So there's not a lot of um, individualized attention to individual market factors and their impact on any one particular sector. The, the emphasis is to keep rebalanced and always rebalance back into the model portfolio ranges because those have been determined for a reason. So that's the institutional style, very passive. And a lot of people think that their money manager is doing this great thing and it's not really what's really actually happening. So then that brings us to what's been kind of growing for the last, I'd say, 10 years, maybe a little bit longer, is this really tactical management. And this is where we can get hedging, hedging your downs. And this is what we all started with is how and do you invest? First of all, step number one is you have to have a plan and a plan that has everything in the market and what I call the triangle of the market, which is the three angles of the triangle, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, REITs, or any variation thereof, hedge funds included. That is the market. So if, number one, you need to have a plan. If your plan is everything I have is in the market except for my liquid cash reserves, that is not a plan that is just an investment strategy. So that is not a plan. So I would re-encourage you to look back at, um, you can definitely call our practice. You can look at my book, uh, Wealth Unbroken. You can do any one of a number of factors to realize that there is no plan and just an investment and a cash reserve account. So that's number one. Number two, once you decide uh, from your plan how much is going to remain invested in the market, 
because we're not anti-market. We're very, very, very pro-market. We're just pro-market to the extent that it makes sense for you, for your risk preference, and for where you are in your life, your actual purposes of your money. Because, you know, your purposes of your money five years from before retirement are a lot different when they when you were 20 and your, your purpose is just to have actually grow some money. So based on your plan and what your purpose is, then we figure out how much is going into the market. And then once it's in the market, now what can we do with it? And this is where the divergence comes between, you know, just regular passive um, institutional quarterly rebalance money and tactical management. Tactical management is where you're always hedging inside of your own investments. What does that mean? What am I saying? What I'm saying is that number one, the manager itself is constantly evaluating the market conditions on a daily basis and they are making trades if necessary on a daily basis to hedge what's happening in the market in other words to protect move into sectors that are on the growth side the upside versus uh, leaving sectors that are more risky more volatile more subject to downgrades and, and to losses you have a tactical manager that's making those position trades all the time, not set based on a, you know, set portfolio allocation of a, of a model portfolio, but based on real time market conditions that they're tracking every day, which leads to potential trades, possibly every day, every week, every month. And that's what hedging is all about. You actually do have a money manager who's actively managing your funds or at least actively managing the funds that you have invested in. So it's a different type of philosophy. It's not a passive philosophy or reactionary philosophy. It's a very proactive and aggressive um, management philosophy. And it certainly costs a lot more money. And so don't expect it to be your little 1% um, because that's ridiculous. Uh, 1% is what you're paying for basically nothing just to be invested with that group in their model portfolio that they're managing. And that's what that 1% goes for. If you've got a tactical manager, it's a lot more expensive because they're doing active management. But this allows you to hedge the downs. And so let me just give you one example as we're starting to run out of time of of an account that we leverage in my practice for our um, money management clients. And all of our clients have some money to some extent in the market for the most part. Um, So we have an account that basically quantifies that we, its objective is to participate greatly in growth, but to not lose any more than 10%. No matter what happens, come whatever may, it will never go down more than 10%. Now that's not a guarantee because this is not a contractual, you know, um, insurance product. This is not a product that we can actually give a guarantee on. It's an investment in the market. But the way that it's structured is that it is designed and actively managed at all times to never produce more than a 10% loss. And when you have like a 34% loss in five weeks, it means a lot to be um, in this particular type of account. So this account In 2019, the S&P 500 with dividends, including dividends at over 31%. This account did over 25%. So we got really at the top end. Remember, this is an account that is conservatively managed to not ever lose more than 10%. So I would tell you that as a very conservative account on the spectrum, yet it's still managed even with its conservative investments to um, do over 25% in 2019, which the benchmark S&P 500 is just, you know, a little bit less than the 31% that the S&P 500 did, which is obviously a much more aggressive portfolio. So it did really good on the top side of 2019. But then when the market crashed so quickly between February 19 and March 23rd, which is what what our low was, um, the market went down over 34% in that time, depending on the index you look at. This account, this 10 account, only went down 9.33%. So it held. It hedged the way it's supposed to. Now, I can't tell you that there will never be some sort of situation that comes along where, um, and and that 9.33% is just through the lows. So certainly as we recovered, it it also recovered. Um, But it's definitely a more conservative portfolio. So you've got other stuff that is going up dramatically immediately. And this is going to be a little bit more because we don't have to go up, you know, some crazy number because we didn't lose 
but 9.33%. So that's a hedged account that is tactically managed, invested at all times, never um, moved to cash. And that's where some people go wrong. They think, well, my account's fine because I've got stop losses. Stop losses mean that when something happens and the losses get triggered, the stop losses get triggered, your positions are going to be sold and you're going to move to cash. You're not going to be reinvested. You're going to move straight to cash. So that's not an invested at all times mentality. And that means that your stop loss had to be right to time the market. What if uh, it wasn't? What if it was a blip and the market came back? Or what if we had a flash crash down and we had a flash crash back up and you were in cash and you were afraid to buy back in because of the virus? Listen, there is no solution to um, wanting to either be all in and get out and time the market. It's not possible. This is why tactical management has become such a huge area of growth and pot and really explosion in investable assets because people know that timing the market is impossible yet they want to protect their money and so how do you do it you stay invested but you hedge the downs and you can do that now through tactical management so if you're not doing that if you don't haven't heard about it if you're calling your advisor at one of these shops and they're telling you oh this is a long-term um, strategy you need to just stay the course and hold through um, like a lot of people that came over to us through this whole situation heard from their advisor and then they promptly lost a substantial amount of their portfolio. Um, if that's what you're hearing, then that's how you're being managed. And now you know the difference between tactical and you know passive, I'd say reactionary uh, model portfolios, which is what pr pretty much predominates all of this uh, world. And um, and this is the new the way. This is the new way to hedge the downside, to be invested at all times, to tactically have management that's tactical and not passive and reactive. And so that is something to, worth looking into. And I hope that you will do that. And uh, for um, all of us here at Crashes and Taxes, all the time we have, talk to you next time.